Good morning, everybody. Ma Terry here, along with our fabulous co-star, Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy is not happy with my choices in life. Um, I chose to be, uh, according to the government, I am homeless. I consider myself houseless. I am at my campground, Loves, where um, I spent the night last night. Um, okay, so I chose to be homeless. I did choose to be homeless. I didn't choose to be homeless. I'm gonna see if I can explain it to you. All right, so it was a couple of years ago, I got Section 8 housing. And as, you know, my social worker told me, all right, once you're into Section 8 housing, never lose it, Terry, never lose it. Don't do anything to lose it. Um, unfortunately, he was explaining it to explaining it to someone that had the mentality of maybe an eight-year-older. Um, I was so fragile back then. I really was. I'm still fragile right now. Um, I was at the first day at the RTR and someone yelled at me and I had a full-blown panic attack. I, I, I think I was the first person at the first aid station. But did I choose to be homeless? Or is the government so stupid they made me homeless? And I'm going to go along with that one. And excuse me, in the morning, my voice is always raspy. I constantly need coffee. So what happened, Terry? Why are you living on the streets? Why are you living at a Love's truck stop? I love my one viewer. So sad. Well, it's the system that's sad. It really is. But I chose not to be sad. I chose to be happy. Okay, so what happened? So I got a Section 8 housing voucher, and that's what they're called. And, uh, you know, first thing they do is they want to put you in the uh, poor area, which, of course, I was poor. But, you know, I didn't want to be in the area where uh, the drug addicts were. There were, like, 10 bars on one street corner. And my social worker said, go find some housing that you like. So I did. So I happened upon this beautiful studio, this one bedroom apartment that had sunlight coming in and uh, it was 600 square feet. It had sunlight coming in and lavender in the back uh, window and there was no way. It, I felt safe and secure there. And uh, the government's like, you can't live there, Terry. It's a studio apartment. You need to find a one bedroom apartment. So um, I'm like, what? And uh, so this really nice guy, he was, uh, he was uh, gay, the rainbow people. He said, good news is I have a really nice apartment in the gay district. And it's like, do you mind if it's in the gay district? And it's like, I don't mind if it's in the gay district. Now, you know, I, my belief is, is the men don't want me. They know I'm not gay and the women don't want me. So I wouldn't be assaulted like I was in the military. So I felt uh, safe in the gay district. And it, you know, the problem with the apartment, again, it was 600 square feet. It cost $150 more than the beautiful studio. So one was a studio right down the street from the beach, but it had that awesome sunlight coming in. So I felt safe. And the other one was dark and dreary and everything. And, but it was uh, separated in such a way that it was called a one bedroom, same square feet. So I took the one bedroom and uh, I only lasted a year in it why because um you know i needed a caretaker i probably do need a caretaker i'm really bad about moving around in apartments and uh, the caretaker was a not a scary person but it's it was scary enough being in a dark area and uh you know having a stranger come into your house to take care of you and i didn't like it and my girlfriend uh kept visiting me and uh, she saw what the caretaker was doing and said, you know what, Terry, here's a great idea. Why don't you move to Redlands and I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll go apply for the job. And she did. And uh, she took care of me. Well, you know, I don't have a big envision of the world. I tell people it's sort of like if you have a painting, just put a canvas in front of the painting and put a hole. And I can basically look around like that and see the world, but I can't see that whole painting. Well, I tried to get Section 8 housing, you know, they wouldn't let me have Section 8 housing, and the reason was, was it was, Redlands is in San Bernardino, and San Bernardino, if you know, is like the most depressed place on the planet, so rent is real cheap, but that's the county, and San Bernardino basically goes from the Inland Empire all the way to LA, so they count the Inland Empire as, uh, you know, a, just a rundown place, but Redlands isn't a rundown place. 
So, um, and but my girlfriend said she'd take care of me. And, uh, you know, I understood I had to uh, leave the v care of the one, oh, that VA hospital was really good. But, uh, you know, I'd have to uh, cut off my Section 8 housing. What I couldn't understand was that, you know, okay, if my space rent was 900 a month, um, it, you know, I never rented an apartment before. I was 50 years old, uh, first time living by myself. Well, within three years, my $900 amount apartment went to 3000 No, it didn't. It didn't. It went to $2,000 a month. They don't pay me that much, $2,000 a month. And there is a lot more to the story, but it's like the government expects someone with a traumatic brain injury to understand how the world works. And the social worker said, once I'm cut off from Section 8 housing, I'm cut off, you know. And I also tried to apply to New York State so my son could be with me. And, uh, you know, I kept calling New York, um, the place where you get Section 8, and New York doesn't call back. Um, so, and, you know, my girlfriend who said she'd take care of me, um, she stayed with me for a couple of months, but then all of her son, sudden, her son moved from Seattle to the Inland Empire with her grandkids, and she wanted to be around with her grandkids, so she quit me. Um, so, um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Actually, there's a little bit more to the story. I also, um, later on, I moved to uh, Las Vegas. I bought a <laughs> broken down mobile home, but that's a story for the di for a different day. So I think uh, the lesson in the story is is um, the government, you know, or whoever the government is. I have no idea who the government is, but they expect somebody that's mentally ill to act like a responsible adult, and it's like you know, with not a lot of help. And it's like, so am I upset? I'm living in my car. No, I'm not upset living in my car. Now, the continuation of the story is um, I am dating Mr. Louie, and Mr. Louie has a nice house, but I'm thinking about it. I am. I haven't made any decision yet. Um, I'm having a ball here, and, uh, you know, I have some challenges. So I'm okay. And don't feel sorry for me. This is my life. This is not your life. I'm pretty comfortable being in my van. I don't mind it at all. I'm having fun. I'm out meeting people, I'm doing things, I have hot coffee, so uh, you know what? I'm going to cut off this video and I'll see you down the road. Thank you everyone for your love and support. I so appreciate that. And who knows where I'll be at tomorrow. I certainly have no idea, but I will see you down the road.